Hey YouTube, it's Justin here, aka Demonic Sweaters. I'm back with another product review. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Cinedu Live Dock audio adapter. Uh, basically what this thing is, is a very, very tiny audio interface, uh, USB-C audio interface. And it's actually very full featured. I was really impressed with the features on this thing. But let's go ahead and open it up and I can get into everything that it does, uh, which is pretty cool. So when you open the box, packaging is very nice. Um, not that that really means that much, but it's kind of cool when they have good packaging. Okay, inside the box you have your inspection past sticker. Uh, there is a user manual as well as this little packet that comes with a cable for connecting it to a smartphone. Uh, if you want to use it for streaming as well as a, an audio adapter right there for a quarter inch. And then a Velcro strap. This, I guess, is if you want to have your phone on a tripod and you have it hanging, you can Velcro this or Velcro the device and the cable to your tripod, which that's pretty useful, actually. Uh, inside, we have the device itself. And it's kind of like a little hockey puck looking thing. Okay, so let's start with the first USB-C uh, jack right there. That's how you can charge your phone. If you have it plugged in and you're using or your iPad or whatever, whatever you have it plugged into, uh, you can still charge your device while it's plugged in. So you don't use your only USB-C jack uh, with the plug itself. It gives you another one to use. Next to that, we have a headset or headphone jack. So that will take either just a regular pair of headphones or you can use a pair of headphones with a microphone on it. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to test that here. I haven't tested that yet, but I'm going to test it and we'll see how that works. Right here, we have another input. This is so you can plug in like a mixer. Uh, the picture right there shows a mixer. In the manual, it's a little misleading. It says sound card, uh, which eh, that's not really the right terminology I would use for that input. I would say mixer or audio input, but that's what that is. It's an audio input, and I have tested that, but I'm going to show you some more uh, in this video how that works. This button right here is a loopback feature. Now, what this does, if you're using it on mobile, and you're streaming, this allows you to record the sound coming out of your mobile device uh, through this device as well. So if you're like on a Skype call or a FaceTime call or something like that, you can record using the loopback feature uh, with this device. Now on the other side, the button here is a direct monitoring button. Now this is very cool. This is very, very useful. This allows you to monitor whatever you have plugged into the microphone or line input uh, inputs on the front of the device. And this allows you to hear that in the headphones or speakers, or whatever you have plugged into your device uh, while you're recording. So that is incredibly useful. And then the rocker up and down arrows or plus and minus. One is for the monitor input level. The other is for the overall headphone level. So. Like I said, it's a full featured audio interface in this tiny, tiny little, you know, thing you can hold in the palm of your hand. In addition to that, it actually has Bluetooth as well. If you push this button right here, this is actually a button. It enables the Bluetooth feature. So if you're connected to your smartphone and you're streaming or something like that, you can connect Bluetooth from another device and send that audio signal into the stream as well or into the recording, whatever you're doing. So again, lots of features packed into this little device right here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a single mobile device that uses USB-C. I have Apple devices that still use Lightning, and then I have an old Android tablet that uses micro USB, but I do have a laptop that uses USB-C. So that's what I'm going to test this with is my laptop, and I'm going to show you how to hook it up and show you how to use it in a program like Ableton Live and uh, do some pretty thorough testing with it. So here we go. Okay, so here's my laptop, and plugging it in is incredibly simple. Obviously, <laughs> I don't really need to show you this, but I'm going to anyways. Just plug it right there into my USB-C input on my laptop, and uh, that's pretty much it. Now, if we're going to use uh, Ableton or any DAW, what you're going to want to do is install ASIO for All. And I'll post a link to this down below. But ASIO for All is a free uh, ASIO audio driver, and this will allow you to get... Uh, very low latency within a program like Ableton. But I'm going to show you more on that here in a little bit. Uh, first off, I want to test some of the streaming uh, capabilities of this thing. So what I'm going to do is switch over to OBS, and I'm going to plug my headset into it, 
And we're going to, you know, kind of pretend like we're streaming here and see how it works. Okay, so right now I'm using my headset mic right here, plugged into the headset jack on the live dock. And what I'm going to do is actually test the loopback feature. So I'm not recording desktop audio through OBS. I'm only recording the mic input. So uh, what I did is I turned on that loopback button. And now if I make the Skype test call, you should be able to hear Skype uh, through the mic input. So let's go ahead and try it. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Test, test, test. And I can see that that is recording uh, the Skype voice uh, through the input here on the microphone. So that's really cool. Uh, I can see it here on OBS. I can see my levels moving. So I know that it's working. I don't know how it sounds, but I know that it's working. Test, test, test. And I can see that that is recording uh, the Skype voice uh, through the input here on the microphone. So that's really cool. Uh, I can see it here on OBS. I can see my levels moving. So I know that it's working. If you are able to hear your own voice, then you have configured Skype correctly. If you hear this message, but not your own voice, then something is wrong with your audio recording settings. Okay, so that works. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Next thing I'm going to try here is connecting Bluetooth. So where is my phone? And yeah, it just shows up as Sinidu Live Doc. So you don't have to worry now. Okay, and that, that was Bluetooth going, you know, right to the Sinidu live uh, dock from my phone. So that worked pretty good. So as a streaming device on Windows, at least, I think it is great. Uh, it has a lot of features, like I said. Uh, you could use a regular microphone as well. Uh, there is no phantom power, uh, just because I think, you know, it has nothing but eighth inch inputs on it. And uh, yeah, it'd be pretty difficult to get phantom power on a device like this. However, you can plug a little mixer into it using the eighth inch uh, jack, input jack on it with the little mixer picture. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually record electronic drums into it. So my next stop is going to be over at my uh, teaching studio. And I have a new song that I've been working on, and I'm going to use this with Ableton Live and plug in my electronic drums and record the drums using nothing but this little device. Well, we'll see if it works. <laughs> I haven't tested that yet, so we'll see. But that's where I'm going next, so here we go. All right, so I'm here in my studio, and I've got the uh, live dock hooked up to my Alesis Nitro Mesh uh, drum set here and running into Ableton Live, and I'm just using the audio outputs, uh, basically from the, the Nitro, and this is a cable that's uh, got two quarter inch on one end and a eighth inch uh, stereo plug on the other end. Now, hooking it up uh, and everything is fine. That all works good. However, I did run into a little problem that isn't a deal breaker, really, but it's just not ideal, and that problem is the input monitor isn't quite loud enough. Um, it's something you don't really notice if you're just like doing your voice and uh, you know talking on a stream. But if you're recording drums and you're listening to backing tracks, it's really hard to get a balance between those two elements. Now, if I have my module turned up like all the way, then it's fine. But the problem with that is if I do that, then I really overload here in Ableton for the uh, audio input. And no matter what I adjust on the live dock, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, the input is just too hot if I have my module up all the way. If I turn it down to about, you know, where it is right there, about 11 o'clock, then I get a good level and I can barely hear the drums in the input monitor on the live dock. The only way I was able to compensate it is to create a group here in... Ableton with all of my music backing tracks and then turn them all down and then also turn my click down as well and then just turn the overall volume up of the live dock and I have it maxed out and it's still 
not very loud. It's actually quite quiet that way, but I can hear it. I can hear it good enough to play along. However, I would much, much rather this be not like this. Um, in my opinion, that monitor uh, input, you need to be able to turn that thing up much louder uh, to be able to be you know, very useful in an audio like DAW recording uh, situation. So anyway, it does work and it records good. You know, it sounds fine. I did a little test already. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually show you guys, I'm going to play uh, through a song here that I made and uh, show you guys the result. This song is called Cop Show. That is the Sunidu Live Dock. Now, my final thoughts are it's good, but it's not great. Um, I think it really depends on what your intended purpose is for it. If you just plan on doing some basic streaming, you know, talking on a microphone and things like that, then yeah, it's probably fine. If you want to use this as like a portable audio interface, then it's really not going to cut the mustard for a lot of situations. I was able to make it work, but it just really was not that pleasurable to play through because the volume is so low. Unfortunately, I was hoping that it would be really good because I really like the form factor and all the inputs and outputs I think are great. Uh, all the, you know, the USB-C, just the fact that it's so tiny. This is really, really cool. Uh, maybe they can do a firmware update, you know, to make the, the, it just needs, the monitor just needs to be louder. That's really it. Um, I've had this criticism of other audio interfaces in the past as well, but none of them are as quiet as this one. And what that means is basically the ability to be able to hear yourself in real time through the hardware, not through the software. And that's really important when you're recording through a DAW because you don't want to hear the latency from your instrument in your headphones when you're playing, especially with drums. So having the real time monitoring feature is really good. It just doesn't quite go loud enough. Very frustrating. Anyway, pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My camera tripod keeps moving down. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Later.